Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian Primer, Traffic at Trade Group, and this is your end of day market recap for Wednesday, August 21st. And I thought today was a really interesting day. I didn't know what kind of day, um, you know, kind of coming into today, uh, what it was going to be like, because um, <clears throat> yesterday was kind of a choppy day. It looked like the market was more in a uh, spot and that um, it wanted to basically uh, digest a little bit, which made, makes per perfect sense to me, you know, especially where we are from a technical standpoint, which I've gone uh, gone through in, um, in yesterday's video. So, you know, kind of open to what um, today could be and, um, you know, just started to see more and more setups as the um, as the session wore on, and I think also one of the things that um, you know I, I keep kind of um, you know hammering the uh, or pounding the desk on is that you know we continue to see really good earnings reports. So before I get into any of that risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. So please read the, the full risk disclaimer right there. So you know, and and that's kind of causing some interesting moves that we're seeing on the table. All right. So, so for example, um, you know, this is kind of what the market is giving us right now. Now, now Target reports good earnings, right? They're up 11%. Um, TJ Maxx also up 6%. So this was kind of the catalyst for, uh, you know, for the retail group. And we started to see names like Kava, which is going to re report tomorrow. Uh, you know, just, just a handful of different names. O-N-O-N, -O -N, I believe had a decent day. Uh, but you can kind of look down this list and then home builders, um, you know, toll was up 5.6%. So again, um, and, you know, I'm just pointing out these for the day, but it's, it's been this way. Um, and if you could kind of ignore some of the noise that's on the tape, right? Today it was the, you know, I'll classify the noise as the, the labor, uh, the labor numbers that they're, that they uh, miscalculated the jobs number, but, you know, and everybody seems to be, cause I tweet out these numbers. I get it. Um, you know, the market is kind of waiting for that. And institutional players are waiting for some of these economic reports. And I tweet that out and I get a whole bunch of questions about, oh, what does this mean? Da, da, da. You know, just watch the price action. And I think also just, you know, make some ob observations about what's going on in terms of earnings names. You know, I've been talking about this um, again. I've been talking about this for a while that a lot of names are doing really well um, reporting earnings. I have well over a hundred names on my earnings uh, watch list, which composes of strong earnings and earnings gaps. Um, and um, it, it's just been very impressive. So um, that's been kind of one of the things that I even, you know, going back a couple of weeks ago to where, you know, the the VIX shot up to, to a very high level. And I just thought that I, I didn't think it was going to last for a long time. I thought that we were due for a market correction. It was one of the things that I said on um, on Twitter that night. I said, hey, you know, we've you normally get two or three pullbacks a year. And we've got one in um, April to uh, March to April. And we got another, you know, we were due for another one. So you got one. But overall, I, I don't I didn't think that the Psalm rule I, I thought was kind of overblown. But regardless, regardless of all that, I don't want to backtrack. I, I think just the 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 main thing is if you were seeing more companies now, again, it's not gonna, it's not going to be every company because we know that there's going to be some names that are just underperformers. Right. And they do that, you know, quarter after quarter. Uh, but I think that there's some pretty good surprises and that's going to be kind of the catalyst for the day. And, and you know, that's really what we saw when you look at um, what some of these groups did today. Um, so, for example, uh, the home builders were up 2.9% for the day. Uh, the semis did okay today. Leisure did okay. So there's definitely these, these opportunities that, that we're seeing on a day-by-day -day basis. And, um, you know, and then also you, you've got, a, so let me just start with a, sorry, I'm going, I'm jumping to different spots, but here's where we are in terms of SPY and we're now above the value area. So I think what, what, is difficult for, for a lot of traders is they have the hindsight and they say, including myself, you're like, Oh, geez, we've rallied so much. You know, we, sh we should be doing this or we should be doing that. Uh, you know, use a level to trade against. Right. And that's basically, the, you know, the keep it simple level is basically is 559. If spy can stay above 559, then there's no reason to do anything else. Um, and kind of just forget about this big move because you got to keep forward on on what's in front of you. And if you can use, you know, if you notice, that's also you could kind of use the five period moving average. Price is above here, so stick with it for as long as it lasts. And again, 
I say these things because no one knows how long a trend is going to last. Even though it feels, you may not feel comfortable with the move that we've seen over the last couple of weeks, including myself. If we're still above the valuary for the month, and we're, which is right here, so you don't even have to really, um, you know, dig in too too far and say, oh, your your support's all the way back here. But you could use the top of value if you want a little bit more. Um, tolerance, then use the five period moving average, right? And it's the same thing over here, right? You hear all kinds of things. Oh, it's low volume. It's a low volume move. Really, all you have to do is pay attention to price. And if once price ducks under the five period, five period moving average, look at what we did. So if you use the five period moving average as a stop, here's where you got out. You didn't have to worry about all this downside stuff, right? If you're trading more in the short term. And it's kind of the same thing. Be long versus the five period moving average. Now you're going to see some intraday checks backs like we saw today, but there you go. And the cues are still playing out um, the bullish 80% rule. So same thing, even though it's a different looking picture and the supports down here, you could also use the 50 day moving average, but you could use this this um, five, uh, five period moving average as well and let it play out a bit, right? And buy some dips a little bit uh, you know, until it actually breaks, until you have a closing break. Um, IWM, small caps. This is this is now where it's getting a little bit more interesting because, you know, again, um, you know, there was the Fed minutes today, which again tells you what happened, uh, you know, weeks ago. And I guess they insert some language in there about there, but I, I, I never really think these things are that important. And again, I, as I said in yesterday's video, I, I don't even think it's really that, I think what's more important is that companies are doing really well in this, I think is, could be, you could make an argument that it's a more difficult environment with prices going up and so on and so forth. But if companies are still doing well and executing, does it really matter if they if they cut interest rates by 25 basis points or 50? I just think that the market is just way over-focused on what the Fed, on these little increments that the Fed is going to be doing at this point. Um, I Sure, I think it's uh, somewhat important that they adopt more of a dovish attitude than a hawkish. That's fine. Um, but overall, I think if you're sticking to what's, uh, what you're seeing in terms of names that are acting really well, I, I think you're just met much better off than trying to trying to listen to every one of these Fed speakers, you know. Um, so uh, that's kind of what I think. And, and the last thing I'll point, I'll point out here is what also gets me a little bit more excited is it's not just the same seven companies, right? For a while, like, you know, that's what it, that's kind of what it was for a portion of the year is that those names made big gains. But you, you could argue whether whether or not those names had great earnings quarters. You know, like Meta had a had a really good quarter. That's fine. Um, Meta is not and not there yet. By the way, you know this is something that I talked about coming into today that you may have a day trade in this in this name, right? And notice where it stopped. And now you can watch this level tomorrow to go long against five thirty six sixty nine, right? So again, it doesn't it doesn't mean you have to like completely abandon the magnificent seven names. It just means that, that there's better momentum out there right now in this market. And I'll give you a couple examples. I just wanted to get through this chart too because I think this is really interesting. Bitcoin was one of the things that did not perform well last week, while everything else did, right? But Take a look at what's going on here. And I went long some Bitcoin today um, with the break inside the value area. So again, it's been, you know, there's been sellers in this. And I think that's kind of what's been going on is there are, you know, big funds that are selling in this. But um, I did go long and I did take one quick profit target um, on the day because this was a nice move uh, for Bitcoin. So again, Bitcoin can be tricky um, and it's not above those short term moving averages, but I'm trading versus a level here. And I started the trade a little bit before um, I just had thought that today that this that this was going to get going a bit so um i'm long some ibit on that all right um and then i was going to go back and in, into you know a couple names that um, upstart i got long two days ago it didn't have a great day yesterday but it was just an inside day i'm continuing to grind and again what i really like about this upstart um is is not what the company does no, i'm just kidding uh i don't know what it does i'm just kidding um but but really just the the technical breakout here um 3744 again it's a weekly chart so we're not done with the week it's going to have to close above 3744 but I, I think if it does, there's a lot of potential upside in this base, base, base. And, you know, and what's the driver on this? What's different about Upstart? Why am I looking at this name now? 
because it had a really good, it had a decent earnings report. I don't want to say a really good earnings report because somebody will come at me and tell me that their that their earnings report wasn't good. But it's about the reaction. It really hasn't had that type of a move. Like you know, we've seen a lot that we you know I, I haven't wanted to look at this company for a long time because the the earnings reaction was very poor, right? Decelerating earnings. Right. Well, it did something different this time. It gapped up for earnings. And, and you know, the main thing to realize here is that these names will change personalities when you have a good earnings report or when you have a better earnings report. Right. If there's enough bad news that's priced into a name that's gone down for a while, it will completely change personalities. People, you know, people will get stuck in names for a long time because they have that rear view mirror where they're like, oh, well, the stock was once great. Okay, well, wait till it actually has a good quarter because it will change. And look at what it's done since since that good quarter, since that better quarter. Right? It was at thirty two bucks. It's up to forty. So again, I don't, I don't want to get into. I'm not even going to look at the numbers. It, that doesn't matter to me. It matters if something happens different. If they have an upsize upside surprise it's going to change and you know this is a name too that it probably doesn't get enough recognition but this is uh, this is carvana everybody was negative on this company because it was going down 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 and it was missing earnings look at what the stock's done this year the beginning of the year the stock was at 53 bucks right now it's at 156 Right? But you've got to have something change with the stock. You have to have some something in their, their earnings will fundamentally change the stock. It will begin to act differently. Right. And it and it really helps when there's a big short interest, is, you know, for something like both of those companies. Right. But it's gotta it, if it's not earnings, it's gotta be something else. It's gotta be a new product announcement. Right. That will get the company going. Like right now, I you know, I continue to see people talk about Baba. Right. Well, it could. I mean, I mean, I don't know if the earnings that they had you now, I mean, they're, they're trying to build from this. Um, was it a good enough earnings as a turnaround? I, I don't know. And I'm kind of undecided about this name. But usually like what you want to see is like a big gap up. On, on earnings, right? That forces the shorts to cover, right? Which kind of provides some tinder and, and then longs get involved too. I don't know if Alibaba did that with their with their earnings, but maybe the, there's enough bad news in the stock that it will be, begin to go. But again, I would rather see something for a name that's gone sideways for a long time, have a strong earning, a really strong earnings reaction because the move will just start to get going. What's a, um, another theme that I saw today, um, and there was another stock. I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember which one it was, but um, I, I like what's going on here. And, and this was brought to my attention by by one of the um, TTG members just talking about some of the power stocks today. That's a pretty nice looking candle there in BST, right? Now, again, it's kind of come down enough and people, you know, once these names have these big runs like this and it breaks down a little bit, Usually it needs to regroup a little bit, and I think this is happening. I got long some power today. This is a this is one of my favorite names in the space. It didn't close on the high, so I'm a little bit disappointed, but um, it did close above the trend line. This is Quanta Services, right? So again, it goes back to all those power companies. We got long some NEE earlier in the week. That's starting to work as well, right? And then another name also to watch in the space is NRG, right? It's also looking pretty good if it could just kind of clear this level. So again, you know, just more more opportunities than um, than than less opportunities. Um, I mentioned uh, DraftKings today. Football season is coming, right? DraftKings loves to rally into into uh, different sports seasons, right? And you know, you can kind of look if you don't believe me, right? Look at look at last year for example. So going back to 2023 or September, right? And the stock kind of takes off a bit, right? So, you know, again, it's not, it doesn't mean the stock's going to like com completely change, but DraftKings likes to, um, you know, sport, uh, you know, betting sites, you know, will do, will pick up a lot of business. So it's a very much a seasonal trade, um, I think, in DraftKings. Roadblocks had a good move today too. You know, and again, like some of these names, like you could just day trade these things. Uh, Roadblocks did take out a VPOC up here, uh, saw some call activity. Um, and that's usually my place to take target, to take a, to take the trade off or to take a target. But this is a name that saw uh, some repeat call activity in here. So I, I, th I did think that that was interesting as well. All right, just a couple more names to go through. Look at Zillow. I think Zillow's kind of, um, you know, is trying to break out of the base. So again, it's, 
it's a sideways base and, and you're going to like some of these names, you're going to have to be patient with them, but I, I like this. And I actually put this in the TTG trend portfolio um, today. Uh, but, um, but nice, you know, again, it may take a little while. I believe the CEO left of this company. So that might be a catalyst in itself, right? This company has made some bad decisions along the way, but you know, it's still one of those companies that people still use. Um, so I mentioned uh, the power group and I also mentioned um, Carvana, you know, look at this company. So this is car, this is uh, car gurus, right? This is another one that's coming out of its base, right? Notice how it's now above all these moving averages. You don't have to mess with trying to pick the bottom at this point. You know, it's already starting to move. And also, besides the car dealership type companies, I think also the um, <clears throat> the car part companies are looking pretty good. This is Orly trying to resolve higher, and um, this is AZO, which is another one. It's trying to resolve higher too. So, you know, there's a lot more stocks to talk about, but I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, stop the uh, the video here. Um, you know, other names that have been just working quite nicely for me. That um, I took another target in this 3M. So again, like here's the change too. Like everybody wanted to get long 3M when it's doing this. I get it. Maybe that worked to some extent, but it's just look at how different it's acting now um, after this move and check back into into some support and and um, you know I'm targeting uh, 132 for this, but it's just so much better once the company to me once the company turns the corner rather than trying to pick the bottom because if it's going to do something great then you don't have to be the first one in um all right guys that is it for today's video have a great night see you tomorrow